This is the sixth video covering activity 4.5. Now we're going to solve these equations, right? The, the last video we only factored, we didn't actually solve the equation, and that has to do with the fact that the previous examples, there was no equal sign. Notice how in example 13 we have an equal sign. When I look at some of the previous problems, like 37, 38, there's no equal sign. If I scroll back to some of the other problems, uh, you look at 27, you'll notice there's no equal sign. So we can't solve a problem without an equal sign. We can factor, we can simplify, but we cannot solve. So now when I scroll down to example 13, I see an equal sign. This we can solve. So the first step would be to write this in standard form, meaning we want to have zero on one side of my equal sign. Right, so here's my step one. If I subtract eight from both sides of the equation, I'll end up with something that looks like this, x squared plus two x minus eight. Second step is factor the left side of the equation, right? That's what we've done in the previous problems. We factored, right? We, we, we said what two numbers were multiplied gave us the negative eight, but when added gave us the positive two. So we end up with x minus two, x plus two equals zero. Now, if you remember from our first video, that zero product principle, right? If this term was considered A and this term was considered B, one of these items had to be equal to zero. Um, so to make the first term zero, we would use x equals two. To make the second term zero, we'd use x equals negative four. And again, I'm gonna just bring you to the beginning of the chapter. If you recall, when I had something like x plus four times x minus five equals zero, we said, all right, the solution to this would be negative four or positive five, because that's what makes these things in the parentheses zero. Okay, so when we scroll all the way back to our work, example 13, uh, we factored the trinomial, and then we realized that, okay, if I put in a positive two for x, I end up with zero, and if I put in a negative four for x, I end up with zero. So my answer would be x equals positive two or x equals negative four. Right? Again, when we're talking about the solution, we're saying what value of x will give me zero, right? What value of x will result in zero? So the value of x of negative four would result in zero or a value for x of two would result in zero. So my solution is x equals two or x equals negative four. By the way, you could graph both sides of this equation and the intersection would happen at x equals two and negative four, okay? All right, take a look at example 14. Okay, here we can start by factoring out the five x. All right, so if I pull a five x out, or I factor out a five x, uh, and then divide each piece by the five x, you're gonna be left with x minus six equals zero. All right, and then again, we're gonna ask ourselves, what values of x will give us this zero? Well, if I made x equals zero, well, five times zero would be zero, and that would make the whole thing zero. And if I made x equal to positive six, right, if I put a positive six here, well, six minus six is zero and the whole thing becomes zero. So my two answers would be x equals zero and x equals six. That's the solution, right? If I take this zero and I put it in for x here and here, I'll end up with zero. If I take six and place it here and here, I'll still end up with zero, all right? So these are my two solutions to the equation. If I take a look at example 15, uh, if I, first I wanna, have a zero on one side of my equation. So I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides. And I end up with 5x squared minus 20 equals zero. Now, if I factor out a 5, I will be left with x squared minus 4 equals zero. And now, that's really the difference of two squares, right? This really becomes five times x plus two times x minus two, All right? So what is the solution? Well, if I had x equals negative two, 
that's one solution, right? Because if I put a negative two in for x here, I'd end up with zero. And then x equals positive two, right? Because if I put in a positive two here, I would result uh, in an answer of zero, okay? So these are my two answers, x equals negative two, x equals positive two. So I look at practice problem number 42. Okay, so on the left side, it's in standard form, so I can factor this. Oops, got to turn on my drawing tool. I can factor this to the x, right? And, and this is where I'd have to do that table. Uh, what two numbers, when multiplied, uh, give me 7, and when added, I, I have 8. So the only option I think I have here would be 1 times 7. Right, because 1 times 7 is 7, and when I add 1 plus 7, I get 8. So x plus 1, x plus 7. That's my answer. But that's not my final answer, right? All we've done is factored. This problem says solve. Okay, so the final answer is what values of x make this true? x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 7. Okay? Again, notice the difference. In 42, there's an equal zero. So our final answer, we're solving x equals negative 1, x equals negative 7. Again, if I go back to some of our previous problems where we did not have an equal sign, let's see if I can scroll quickly. Um, some of our earlier problems, like 23, notice there's no equal sign, right? 24, there was no equal sign. So we could factor, but we couldn't go any further. We had to stop at w minus 2, w minus 5. Right? We had to stop at x plus 3, x plus 4 for 22. If I put an equal 0, then we take it a step further and say x equals negative 3, x equals negative 4. Okay. So let's go back to our practice problems. All right, so take a look at number 44. Like this is not in standard form, so I would need to subtract 18 from both sides to get something that looks like this, right? If I subtract 18 from both sides of the equal sign, this is what I'd have. And now you'd say, okay, what two numbers when multiplied will give me negative 18? Okay, right, what two numbers? When I multiply, I get negative 18. When I add, I get three. So I'm thinking either three times six, some combination. Um, so if I did um, negative three, times positive 6, that's negative 18, and when I add that, I end up with 3, so this is good, minus 3 plus 6. And again, you're tempted to say, okay, I did, I'm finished, but remember, we didn't solve the equation, right? The instructions say solve, so solve means what values of x will give me 0, or will result in 0. So x equals 3, x equals negative 6, those are my two answers. All right. When I look at 46, bring the 5w over. All right. So I subtract 5w from both sides, and we have something that looks like this. Oof, my 5 is a little sloppy. Let's see if I can improve on that. It's a little better. All right. So again, we're going to write our parentheses. It's going to look something like this. And we're going to say, what two numbers when multiplied give me 6, but when added result in 5. So I'm thinking 2 times 3, right? That would result in positive 6. And when I add this, I end up with 5. Now, some of you might have thought, oh, well, what about 1 and 6? Well, that works, but the problem is when I add 1 and 6, I get 7. So that's no good. Right? We need two numbers that multiplied give me 6, and when I add those same two numbers, I end up with 5. So w plus 2, w plus 3, and again, we've only factored, we didn't solve yet. So the actual solution, w equals negative 2, w equals negative 3. That's my final answer. Okay. Uh, if I look at number 48, well, actually, you know what? I'm going to do 48 and 50 on the last video, okay? I try to keep my videos under 10 minutes. So uh, this will conclude video six, and there'll be one more video to finish out the chapter.